Hello, it's Peter Barnes, Harpsichords here. I thought I'd just show you the work that I've been doing on this 1940 Hodgson Virginal. My first job was to replace the bass strings, clean the instrument, and then I had to fix this little uh, piece of timber here to hold down the bridge which had pulled up due to excessively thick strings being put on the base of the instrument. As was customary at the time, uh, the pletra were leather pletra, and I've retained the leather pad, but taken it out, cut half a millimetre off the top, and reinserted it with the Delrin pletra, which you can see sticking out of the front, and there's the leather patch on this jack. Um, so that had to be done. The tail screws had to be adjusted and some of the jacks had to be shortened to make them work because, of course, the Delrin Pletra tend to be just a little bit higher up than the original leather tops of the leather ones were. Um, some of the jacks were sloppy in their jack guides, uh, so a couple of strips of um, thickish paper glued onto the front of the jack then gives you just slightly more room uh, for the length in the pletrum, which is handy, and stops the jack flapping around and being unreliable. Um, the damper slot uh, is here and uh, the dampers fitted originally were very very thin and not that effective um, so I've adopted a solution which is completely reversible of gluing these little pads of damper felt onto the side of the jack they're then trimmed to length and at a diagonal um, so that they work uh, effectively on the strings in addition we had um, some jacks where the cutaway for the top for this metal bar um, was so close that uh, there was very little room to put in a pletrum at the front and that tended to cause the pletra to not uh, sit vertically out of the um, the, the tongue. Um, they ideally want to uh, tilt up about um, seven degrees um, pointing up towards the strings and they pluck it firmly and then uh, on the return Turn, they drop back easily. Um, so this um, it, it, this had a replacement tongue completely. This jack um, with a, a, a designed for a Delrin pletrum. Um, some of the springs um, had to be replaced, and mostly that could be done with uh, bristles. But um, where the drilling of the hole wasn't accurate, and a bristle wasn't bearing on the top part of the, the tongue, um, then I fitted phosphor bronze wire, which then can be bent to shape, since it bears down on the top part of the tongue, making the return um, satisfactory. Um, of course, this spring mustn't be too firm, otherwise uh, the jack will hang on the string. By pointing the camera down onto the strings, um, I hope I can show you... ...how the flucking works, and the way that the pletrum is just short and longer than the string, and it just sits underneath the string. If it's too long, then like this one is, that um, plectrum doesn't rest on the string and doesn't go underneath the string at times, making the jack unreliable. So I need to shorten that slightly. The plucking has to be made even as well, so that the volume is consistent. And that's done by thinning the underside of the plectrum. This is the plectrum that was slightly too long and you can see that I have the jack resting on a block of wood resting upside down with the plectrum supported so that I can then use a knife and take off the tiniest section of the top of the plectrum like that. This um, plectrum was just slightly too thick and plucking too loudly as a result. So here I am trimming off the thickness of this just to make it slightly more flexible since it's slightly softer in volume. So this has actually been one of the trickiest actions that I've worked on and I hope to demonstrate. <laughs> So 
but it's now working nice and evenly. One of the difficulties that you have with a virginal, uh, particular to the virginal, is the very long string length between uh, one bridge or the end of the string and the plucking point. Um, it's about a fifth of the total distance between uh, along the length of the string and at that point um, the strings vibrating a lot um, there. If you pluck the string closer to the end then there's much less vibration of that part of the string for the same volume. Um, it's all very well except the strings vibrating a lot and when the plectrum first touches the string on the way down you get that that rather la large buzz which is unavoidable and the also the reason because the strings moving so much there when you want to replace uh, 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 do a trill repeat a note then it's rather sluggish to react because sometimes the strings in the wrong place when you try and pluck it again so that makes um, little quick flourishy passages in the bass a bit tricky. So anyhow I hope that's been useful or at least interesting um, and I'm going to play you out uh, with the uh, first prelude from uh, J.S. Bach's book uh, 48 number one.